river run, run through the hills, run river run to the sea, run river run to your place beneath the sun, run river run over me, run through the land, you run through my soul, bring me wisdom and peace. My guest, this is Jan Lewis. Today we have, from Lexington, Kathleen Rowe, and she is an author, the author of Exploring the Charles River. I met Kathleen at the, uh, that, I talk about it a lot, the Danvers Port uh, Authors Expo, in New England Authors Expo. Happens once a year in July, and she was one of the many wonderful authors that I met. Welcome. Good well, to see you. Thank you, Jan. Good and she here. brought her book with, I haven't had the, this is the first time, I haven't, I haven't read one yet, but I've already... I'm hosing a copy. <laughs> I cannot wait. The cover is gorgeous. Paul can um, can uh, zero in on it. And Kathleen, while he's zeroing in on the cover, how did you get interested in the Charles River? Well, it's actually in the preface of the book, which I will read a little section sure, of. Sure, please. Um, and it, it goes way back. Um, many years ago, while I was a senior at a small Kansas college, I came to Boston to interview for teaching positions in the area. And during that week, I met a high school friend in Park Square for a tour around the Boston Common mm -hmm. and a stop at Bailey's um, for ice cream topped with my first Jimmy's. Mm -hmm. Then we took the red line from Park to Harvard Square and as the subway headed up out of the dark tunnel I was amazed to see the jewel that was the Charles River Basin sparkling in the sunlight for one brief moment as the train rode over the Longfellow Bridge. I will never forget that April day and my first view of the Charles with the sailboats on the water. And then as time went on, I did a number of things. I even filmed for a course I was taking on the dock at the community boating where I learned how to sail. And, and I picked up Max Hall's book called The People's River, and that was an inspiration. And kind of a guide, as was Mike Tagayas' book about his travels in a rowboat. So I started off on foot and by car, and I went to Hopkinton with a camera and notebook, and I have been exploring ever since. Well, for those, uh, we have viewers from actually all over the country and the world, since we're internationally online. Hopkinton, the, that's actually the beginning of the marathon, the Boston Marathon, is right next to Upton, where we are right now. So you started in Hopkinton? Yes. And you are a photographer, too, because this book is loaded with fantastic Well, I, I really am not a professional photographer, but I, and a lot of that I've been able to do with my iPhone, believe it or not. Are you serious? I am serious. Because this looks like a professional. <laughs> well, thank you. And then some of them are from the um, editor and her friend, too. There are a few. Well, the cover definitely is yeah, from them. Yeah, definitely. Jay Piver. I love the way. This is the, is this, what, now this is a Charles River tour boat. Yes. And is that the Prue behind? No, no. Let's see what page is that. Oh, the yeah. Prudential? What is that? Book? Yes. It is? Uh -huh. Isn't that amazing? My college roommate got married at the top of that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> no, 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 they didn't no, get scared. no. Wait a minute. No, she um, she was proposed to at the top. Oh, that's Because nice. I was at her wedding and it just dawned on me, Jan, you weren't at the top of the crew. No, <laughs> that's she was, okay. She was proposed to. The new they, quote, the new. Is oh, that, I'm is sorry. That a, excuse me. That's the John Hancock. That's the John Hancock oh, building. Okay. okay. And that's is that a regatta? You know, that's one I did not take, yeah. but I have seen those boats around. I'm not really sure if they're racing or what they're doing. Probably racing in that picture. You know, a lot of us don't realize how far the Charles River goes. It's it's in Milford. Mm -hmm, it starts. Which I just realized recently that that goes... Where does it begin? It actually... <laughs> there was a controversy, and I think it's been settled, where some said it started in Hopkinton on Granite Street, in fact, I even went there, cause, and then um, took a couple pictures, not much to take, little trickles of water that crossed the road, and went into Milford. And so it goes into a big reservoir there, and you could say that's the official start of the river, because there's a dam right there yeah. um, with about a 283-foot drop uh, through piping that goes down into a treatment center, and then it continues on for its 80 miles. Into ba Does it stop at Boston? Yes, because it goes into, well, it goes through the basin. Mm -hmm. I mean, after it leaves that basin that everyone sees. Mm -hmm. In Milford? Um, it, in, no, the basin in Boston. The Boston one, okay. After it leaves that, I have a little map here too, but ever, when it leaves that, it, it then goes through the Gridley Dam and the locks right there, which are just before the harbor, and then it goes into the harbor. How long did it take you to put your book together? A long time. 
Years? Are we talking years? <laughs> We're talking, well, I made my little trip that day in 99. It was a beautiful July day, and I took a picture of Milford Pond that looked like something out of a painting. Believe yes. you me. Yeah. And it's, I can't wait to see what it looks like today, because I'm going to go by there. Norumbega P Tower. Is that near where Norumbega Park was? In Waltham. Now, this in is Newton. way way before my time, but my father, or was my grandfather, talked about Going dancing at Norman Beacon yes, Park? Yes, it was a big deal. And I taught in Waltham, and the people who had lived in Waltham quite a while, they went on and on about how wonderful it was. They Norm had a good, great time when they were younger there. And the car in the 60s is what led to the closing down of that um, amusement area. So you go, you went from Hopkinton and to Milford, then where did you go? Well, <laughs> this is the funny thing, the river sort of disappeared mm -hmm. in Milford in this big field, and I said, where did it go? And I was facing the big white church on Central Street, and I found out it had gone into a culvert, and then it came out on the other side of the street. How did you Route figure 16? this out? Because I was walking around saying, where is it, where is it? And I walked across the street, and lo and behold, it was behind someone's backyard. And so then... <laughs> and you didn't go to the town hall to ask them or the fire? No? No. I, I thought I'd be able to spot it. Yeah. yeah. And it was a beautiful day, so it wasn't bad to be hiking around a little. And then it went into Hopedale, and after that I said, okay, I'll come back for another visit, because I was, at that time, I didn't know my way around that well, so I came back another time and did some of the other towns, like Bellingham and so forth. So, okay, so... All right, so you see this area, Bellingham, Milford, and then what happens as you go further up? How, where does it go into? Well, um, as it's coming actually down, down from there. Milford and the reservoir there, it goes through several towns. And in fact, um, there is a kind of a simple map in the back of this book that gives you the outline of I've it. I've got it right here. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah. So Bellingham, Hopedale, Milford. Oh, yeah, the M towns, I call them. <laughs> yeah, Franklin, Norfolk. The mm -hmm. Milford Dam, Hopkinton Millis, it, I call it snaking up to Boston, but you it say it does. comes downward. Well, yeah, it's funny. It's going, even though we're looking at it as though it's going up, yeah. it is going down river. We're going down to the ocean eventually. So from Charlestown, Cambridge, Watertown, Waltham, Weston, Wellesley, Newton, mm -hmm. Needham, Natick, Sherborne, Hopkinton Millis, Medway, Norfolk, Franklin, that river gets around. Hope it does. Hill, Hill, this it is does. the Charles River, and <laughs> I never knew it, it would. I always think when somebody mentioned Charles River, I thought, "Oh, that's up in Boston." Yeah, it's just all those places, and in some places it's mostly wetland, mm -hmm. and that was intentional. They left it that way. That keeps uh, it prevents flooding from happening further down, yeah. down river. But um, it's just amazing, and all the way along you'll see things like River Street, Charles Street, you know, that lets you know that it's not that far. And if you're on Route 16, you are following the river a lot. Okay, that's right up here. Yes. You can get onto that in Menden, Hopedale, all that area, yes. Milford. And you actually, you came in via 16 today, I, didn't you? For the most part. I, I started in Wellesley, yeah. and actually on I-95 I got off at Wellesley, and I followed at 16 most of the way. Mm -hmm. Most of the way. Does the, the uh, duck tour go on the Charles? It certainly does. That duck tour. Now, my son went on that. With schools, a lot of schools will take the kids, their class. Yeah. on the. Duck. I've never been on it, but that looks like a lot of fun. It is fun. We've done that. You've my mom on. and I have done it, and my husband and friends have You've done, done it. You've done that. Yes. So they literally, okay, so it's got the pontoons for the water, and yes. then it's got wheels up under it? Yes. It's an old, it's based on an old World War II amphibian, amphibious vehicle yeah. and it used to be capital D U K H which stood for whatever the army was calling it. Okay. But they now just made it simpler and just say duck D U C K because it's like a duck. It goes in water and it comes out. And it's a great tour. Land and, and both by land and water. Now is that what we see on um, the well the July fourth celebration? Is that where the uh, head shell is? Well, it doesn't start there, but it goes by there. It does. And the basin where that wonderful celebration takes place, um, there's a lot going on there all the time. But the duck boat goes past that, it through the basin, and it ends up at Copley Square. And then, coming back the other way, it ends up um, in front of the, the other point is the Museum of Science. So you can catch it either place. You can because I know when I'm watching the fireworks on television, it's huge, it's a big body of water underneath yes. those fireworks. Yes. Yeah, so that's part of the Charles. Yes, it is, the basin. Where, 
There was another place called the Totem Pole. Yeah. Uh, my grandfather, I think somebody yes. told me about. Where was that near the? Totem that was at the Winnebago. I'm um, not excuse Norumbega? me. Norumbega. Norumbega. It was area. there. So yes. They were all close to each other. They were. No wonder those that generation was dancing over there. Yes. That's what I learned growing up. Yeah. And you know, it goes back to the early 1900s. On a typical Sunday day, there would be thousands of people in rowboats. Picture their 19th century clothing or their early. In the 20s. big house. It was wonderful, uh, from what I can see of old photographs. And they actually, the, the Green Line train down Calm Ave was built so that people could get out there. Really? That was one of the reasons it was I built. had no idea about this. This is the Natick Historical Society. It offers tours upon request of the Charles River? No, in the uh, Bacon Library mm -hmm. in South Natick, which they don't really call it South that much anymore, but Natick, on Route 16, mm -hmm. There is in the basement a little museum, and inside of this museum, in a, in a safety deposit box, I should say in a safe, mm -hmm. there is a copy of the Bible in Algonquin. Because back in the 1600s, a, um, a Reverend John Elliot had set up a village for the Indians that were living around the area, mm -hmm. and they were using the water of the Charles, to, they had a millstone and everything there. And um, he had this little community going on, and he himself learned Algonquin and then translated the Bible. That's pretty interesting. I thought the so. The Bible? The Bible, the whole thing. Now we're talking with Kathleen Rowe, and she's the author of Exploring the Charles River. And if you want some beautiful photography with the information that goes along with it, the Echo Bridge at Hemlock, oh. George. Gorge. Gorge. Where is that? Oh, that's Newton Upper Falls. That is one of my absolute favorite places. And it's it's actually, this arched bridge is wonderful. It's It supports an aqueduct. The Sudbury Aqueduct goes across it. Did you want, I don't know if this is good to no, show No, you know, I used to live in Sudbury. I'm beginning to remember this. So you can walk across the top of it. Yeah. You can go down to the main arch and stand on a platform and hear your voice echoing, yeah. Echo Bridge. Yeah. And the, the, you know how there's motif number one in Rockport mm -hmm. that a lot of people know about, the most painted place? It's the red um, little shed there with all the buoys. Well, motif number two is at this site. And my friend and I went there to paint about three weeks ago, and we found it. And when you see, when you get down to the right spot and you're looking at the bridge from the other side, from what this shows, mm -hmm. you see a perfect circle formed by the arch of the bridge and its reflection in the water. It's like a big circle, like an eye. Like an eye. Yeah, and then through it you see some buildings that were mill buildings at one time, and it's beautiful. You have quite the eye for detail. <laughs> you really do, and an awful lot of patience to track a river. It took a lot of, oh my oh. gosh. Are you working? <laughs> I mean, outside the home? I, mean. I did. I, I taught for 34, 35 years. Oh, great. I was English 7th and 8th for 13 and a half years. I was then in a library across from the river in Waltham yeah. for 20 years. Yeah. Children ages K to 6. And we were right across the street from the watch factory. So it just, and we had lived in Watertown. And I, just about everything I did somehow had a connection to that river and just kept me going and looking. and had a fascination for it. What does your family think about your, your, your great fascination of this? Are they with yeah. you? Yes, they are. They are. Uh huh. You have kids too? I have a son. He's out in California, but he'll probably wend his way back here sometime. <laughs> he will. Being a teacher, we have a, a, a local uh, a woman who was uh, a teacher for many, many years. I was reading about her. It's when retirement is also be almost becoming a, a, a no word anymore. People kind of like, yeah. well, I may be leave, leaving this now. Right. Now I'm going on to this. Yes. That could be at any age. Yeah. So this is like just, a second career. This gave you the chance. You just knew as soon as you left teaching, this is what I'm going to do. I had already done a little bit, and the book took many forms, and there was paintings of some of the sites, and there were photographs and everything. And it just sort of led its way along until this is what we have. Richard, Sir Richard Saltonstall, wasn't there Leverett Saltonstall? Who was he? Yes, Richard Saltonstall was um, sent by the Governor Winthrop in 1630 to go to the head of the, Char uh, not the head of the Charles, but the place where the estuary went all the way up to Watertown. There yeah. was an estuary on the river at one time where the um, ocean water mingled with the fresh water and all kinds of fish would go up river to spawn. And 
So Richard Saltonstall brought his group um, to a place that was called at the time Jerry's Landing, named mm -hmm. after a vice president under Monroe, and he's the one who established the town of Watertown. And if and the Indians and the people, the Native Americans, excuse me, the Native Americans, and the people who came there to live, um, it started out very nicely because this group of men just before Saltonstall, a month before, Roger Clapp had led this group. They wanted to be able to camp at a certain spot in the river, at the river, and they saw that there were Native Americans nearby, and, and they asked if they could camp there and not have any, you know, everything would be okay. So, what do the Native Americans do? They give them a bass to welcome them. And you have a picture in here, Roger Clapp, I just saw it. Yes. With an yes. American, Indi Amer American uh, Indian. And that's on the monument to Saltonstall. That's, that's on? Right near Watertown Square. Now, when you say the head of the Charles, where is the head of the Charles River? Well, you know, that's a good question, but are you thinking of the regatta? Yeah, I'm seeing a regatta yeah. here. I'm going to say that probably that area that I'm talking about, because the head of the Charles, okay, you have that Elliott Bridge, the Cambridge Boathouse, you have Jerry's Landing, Route 2, Memorial Drive, Greenough Boulevard, all in this one nexus. Mm. And so f at that point, that's where the um, the race ends. Yeah. To be honest with you, I can't say that where looks the name like it came from. Old building, that beautiful big white building. That's the Cambridge Boathouse. How old is that? I don't really know. That would be an interesting thing. That looks like back in the days when the ladies had the high hats. And yes. Weeks Footbridge at Riverbend Park. Beautiful Riverbend. place. Where is Riverbend Park is across from Harvard, and the, the footbridge takes you from one part of Harvard mm -hmm. campus to the other side, which is on Storo Drive. So you're going from Memorial to Storo by foot across the river. By foot. Mm -hmm. Cassian, how can people reach you if they would like to uh, look, have, obtain your book? Well, there's a few ways. One is that I have a um, website called explorethecharles.com. And I'm writing a blog. Twice a month I post a blog. Mm -hmm. It's in some aspect of the river that's not necessarily in the book. It's kind of like a spin-off from the book. And I on, I'm on Facebook and Twitter, so there are a number of ways to reach me. And um, so They can find you on uh, Amazon? Yes, my book is for sale on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble, mm -hmm. and it's also at um, two or three of the independent bookstores around Boston, which include the, um, let's see, there's the Trident Bookstore and Cafe mm -hmm. on Newberry Street, and then there is the, um, let's see, I want to say it's right around, it's on Mass Ave in Cambridge. Well, there's two other um, major bookstores that are indie bookstores, they call them, independent. You know what, you, have, you, have you been over to Tatnuck in Westboro? You would, mm. oh, we'd, I would talk about it later. That is, uh, they're very author friendly. They have oh. many authors come. You could even give a presentation. They have a room. Um, mm -hmm. I highly recommend it. We'll talk. The Charles River Watershed Association's in Weston. That's where it is. Yes. I wasn't it sure. It moved, yeah. It yeah. had been in Waltham for a while. Okay. I was, when we have those big storms and the river rises, probably would have been easier if you'd have, if you went through Milford. Looking in the col, col what's it called? The colon, the colander. What's the col um, Where'd you find it? The uh, that cylinder thing that you found. Oh called? yeah, the um, it's like an eye, but it's the um, motif number two. Yeah, so, you so easier to find it when it's probably higher, right? Well, it isn't easy to find because it's you have to go down into some brush along the river, and and it's kind of a rocky it's route. But there is kind of a, a small trail that they've created. How did you down know, there. though, instinctively, how to do this? Well, I had heard about it from our art teacher. My friend and I were determined to find it, and we found what looked like a trail. We knew it. I had looked it up online and saw that we had to be on the north side of mm. the bridge to right. see this. So we worked our way around, one dead end, and then we worked back up and down again. And, ah, oh, there it was, and there was this bench from a man who had years ago um, done writing about that that scene and everything. And that's how So we knew that that was it. Yeah. You knew. And so you've been gung ho on this for how many years now? I would say if you go back to 99, that's when I really mm. got started. But then I had a couple of years I was still teaching and then I would say that to get going in earnest maybe 2003 or 4 with the research and this exploration and all of that, the writing itself there were a couple of stops and starts. I had to think, do I want a coffee table book of photos mm. or do I want a guide? 
this is a guide. To me, it's both. Okay, thank you. And yeah. not only do you have in here places that you can go and things that you can do, but you also have the facilities, visitor information in the back. Oh, okay. So yes. you have the, all right. And then you have places where you can rent canoes and kayaks. Okay. Like, for instance, the Charles River Canoe and Kayak and other people and the place where you can take sailing. So it's all back here. Yeah. And then this book takes you further out to where you can hike in Sherburne and in Medfield. There are some hiking areas that are next to the river. So... I want to read the back of the cover to uh, okay. give you a better idea. I'll, I'll read it for you and give you a break. It's about Kathleen Rowe and... Um, She's a former English teacher. Kathleen loves exploring the Charles River while photographing, researching, which, gosh, she did an awful lot of all of it, and writing about the different areas of this ever-changing waterway. She has also participated in environment activities. We're having a big one coming up here in um, Upton, mm. such as river cleanups, screen stream surveys, climate change programs, and the establishment of a community farm. Where you've got your finger in a lot of pies. I where, did. Where yeah. is the community farm? It's in Lexington, and uh, it's about seven and a half acres right now. Mm -hmm. And um, community. I mean, they're trying. They have their uh, CSA shares for mm -hmm. people to buy, and they ask for the com for community members to help them. And it's not just Lexington people. Anybody, Arlington or the neighboring area. It's next to the Arlington Reservoir. We're okay, talking again with Kathleen Rowe, and she's the author of Exploring the Charles River, and. Um, you were also very into the environmental activities, correct? Yes. Still, still, right? Well, I was eight and a half years with the um, Lexington's Global Warming Action Coalition. I'm not with them now because I really got involved with some family um, things that I had to do, but also then I was with this writing, this really hunkering down and getting the format I wanted. Yeah. So, How, What would you do, spend a whole day basically hold up writing? No, I can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's tough to do that. Life gets in the way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even as a memoir ghostwriter, I, you know, I have to like, okay, I got a break now, because you're gonna go nuts. Oh yeah, and then if you're looking at the computer screen too long, eyes, your eyes get dry, and yeah. you don't see as well because you're not blinking enough. You're noticing that too. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have, uh, I have become acquainted with eye drops. Yes, yeah, so have I. <laughs> and it feels <laughs> funny. It's like a sticky. I don't a sleep, cloudy, sleepy, sticky. Yes, you feel almost sleepy. Yes, but it's during the day too. I think a lot yes. of mine is allergies included. And I have allergies. Yeah, so I hear you. So we're very blessed. <laughs> Do we have another book on on Q coming up? Not really. I'm going around talking about this a lot, and there, if there is another book, it will be a spinoff from something here. It will, or something that's in one of my blog entries. Like, what do you blog about? Oh, I blogged about the. Forgotten Half Mile of the River, which is now a beautiful area of parks. Mm -hmm. I, I um, blogged about um, different areas like what was once called Hell's Half Acre, which was right near, which was right on Greenough Boulevard, and there, there is um, a foundation that is going to, to really make that special mm -hmm. and have a pathway going, they think, through the Mount Auburn Cemetery. So that's coming up. Where have I heard about this? Why would they go? Oh, a pathway through the That's right. walking pathway. All right. I, I, okay, not a highway, a pathway. <laughs> you don't want to be doing that in the cemetery. And I have to say that that was the last remaining wetland area in the Boston, greater, you know, Boston area, yeah. Boston, Cambridge, right there. It is still there, the wetland. But there was a highway, or a four-lane road went right through it, mm -hmm. Greenough Boulevard, and it hasn't been that busy, so they don't really need it. Yeah. So they're going to try to make it two lanes and make it more pedestrian friendly and more interesting. Do you think that we have enough pedestrian friendly things, uh, you know, like hiking tours and things like this? Uh, not necessarily. Mm. Not, and, and by the way, there's a, a group that's, that's been working in Newton and Wellesley and other towns on a Rip Charles River Link Trail mm -hmm. that is working its way through. And if you look on the cover of this book, yeah. This um, is a scene that is part of that trail because you're looking at a footbridge over the river, mm -hmm. over the Cordingley Dam. Okay. And um, I just think that picture is wonderful. Yeah. And believe it or not, that little area of the Charles is right off Route 16, right off I-95, and one day after a week of storms, I couldn't believe the white water that was on the river. You could yeah. stand over it on that bridge. It looks almost go, like a whitewater rafting. Yeah. 
You wanted to read us a bit. Read what was it that you wanted to read? Oh, that part in the beginning. Yes, read and that too. That that sounds. Very oh, I'll good. read you the thing also at the end because that has to do with according to exploring the Charles River. Okay, this one little snippet here in the back. The scenic photo of the falling and it's about the cover mm -hmm. of the falling water on the cover of this book is at an important juncture in time and space in Newton Lower Falls where the Mary Hunnewell Five Footbridge crosses over the Cordingley Dam connecting Newton and Wellesley, part of a link in the Charles River Link Trail. These falls, like so many in New England, were used to power mills in the 17th and 18th century until they were closed to make way for new methods of manufacturing and the leap into the 20th century with its highway building and high-speed travel. Close to this scenic location is the overpass of the major I-95 Route 128 highway for cars. Um, the trail that crosses here under the highway is one of the, or near the highway overpass, is one of the many that are now being constructed in the new century, a time of searching for quiet places of natural beauty. Thank you so much. We're going to wrap this up. Now, Thank you. exploring the Charles, how, again, how can people get a hold of your book? They can go to Amazon or to Barnes & Noble, mm -hmm. and they can also go to the independent bookstores. They can look online at my webpage, and there's information there about um, contacting, how to contact me, and the Facebook page. And if people want you to come and give a presentation, are you, would you do that? Oh, certainly, yes. I enjoy doing it, actually. And, and do you have an email they could reach you at? Yes, it's Keg Row. Um, well, actually, I did change the email um, for my business purposes. But if you start at that explorethecharles.com website, mm -hmm. that would have on it, I will put on that. A contact button? Yes. That. You, you, how many times I will try to see, okay, I've read about this person, <laughs> I go online, yes. not one contact click. Yes. I'm a, how do, and then I you try to find someone's email. I know. Email. That's when I backtrack, I say, okay, where have they appeared, now can I get it from this person? The, it's Actually, it's very similar to my regular email. Wait a minute, I think I almost remembered. I just did this yeah. recently. Right. Um, I don't want to give the wrong information, but um, Kathleen E R eight. Okay. gmail.com. So it's K-A-T-H-L-E-E-N-E R 8 the number 8, yep. at gmail. Now, there you go. Terrific. If you wanted to come and speak about her oh. magnificent uh, book here and, and her knowledge of it, the Charles River right here in Massachusetts. Exploring the Charles River by Kathleen Rowe. Don't miss this one. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you for having me. We'll look Jan. forward to a next one. All right. Okay. Okay. We'll see you next time. Okay. Run, river, run, run through the hills, run, river, run to the sea, run, river, run to your place beneath the sun, run, river,